Granite is one of the most important and abundant rocks in the Earth. If we look at the Earth's surface, the outer layer of our Earth is called the crust, and the crust is composed of continental crust underlying the land masses and oceanic crust on the bottom of the ocean floor. And although a lot of the continents are sedimentary rock at the surface, deep down uh, for many, many miles, they're composed of a great deal of granite. So granite, even though you might not be able to see it at the surface where you live, is down there underneath you uh, somewhere. Now this is what granite looks like. It's a mixture of different minerals. It's an example of an igneous rock. And it's a rock that cooled slowly from molten rock or magma. And therefore, there was time for visible crystals to develop. So with a hand lens, you can easily identify some of the things that are present in the specimen. Now exactly what do we have in a typical granite? Well, if you look at it, one of the first things that you'll see is quartz. Now quartz here in this specimen is a crystal, and you're not going to see anything this big and fancy in granite, but some of the gray sort of uh, translucent material in a granite specimen is going to be quartz. The second thing that you'll see is a mineral called feldspar. Feldspar is a group of minerals, more than just one specific, but feldspar is the most abundant mineral group in the surface of the earth. Feldspar can be either gray, white, or pink in color, and so we can have different colors of granite. Granite is, of course, very uh, commonly used for monuments, uh, facades of buildings, and so forth. And if you look at a lot of granite, you'll see different colors of it. And some of it will be more pink, some of it will be, uh, have very little pink in it. But here are some examples of feldspar that you would find uh, in a uh, granite. This is a pink feldspar, and this is an example of a white or gray feldspar. The last thing that you find in granite, if you look at it closely, you'll see some little flakes of dark minerals. Now, by definition, granite is going to be less than one quarter dark minerals. The more dark minerals in a, an igneous rock, we go to different classifications and categories. But in this, we will see examples of dark minerals, one of which is hornblende, which is a member of the amphibole group. And as you can see in this large specimen, it's got a dark color, and uh, it, it fractures or, or cleaves, rather, uh, with a uh, flat surface, as you can see in some places on here. And you could note some of those properties under the microscope. So this is an example of how looking at a rock, which is a mixture of minerals, you can begin to identify the minerals that are present. Not all rocks will have minerals big enough to see individually, but granite is a good example of one that will.